why would you build your own router? Like, what honestly is the difference between this quite nice TP-Link AC100 or this home build router based on top of a Chinese mini PC? Why would you do that? What's the point? Well, it's very simple. This is better in every single possible way. And that's pretty much it. Uh, this is the Quotom something or other mini PC running PFSense. Now PFSense is a variant of BSD, which is basically designed to be a router. And it acts just like any other router, just like one of these. However, this is something you build yourself. You can install it on any hardware you like, pretty much. Um, it has some issues with ARM, but any x86 hardware or 64-bit systems, plop it onto this, make sure you've got two network jacks and you've got basically the router of champions. Uh, this is often used in enterprise situations and it's used by some home users to make their uh, home network more secure and just to have awesome features such as multiple networking, caching, you can use plugins then to do ridiculous amounts of stuff. You can have a DNS caching. So when your DNS server goes down, uh, if your ISP one goes down, even though you shouldn't use your ISP one, you should only ever be <laughs> using the um, uh, Google's DNS or OpenDNS, which I have both set up on this. So let's take a look at this. This, as I said, is the Quotom Mini PC. It's pretty basic. It has a Celeron quad core, and I this is a bare bones system. So I had to install my own RAM and my own mSATA drive. So I chose a Kingston 60 gigabyte mSATA drive, standard enough stuff, and eight gigs of so dim DDR3, I think it was 1333 memory. You don't really need that much memory for a router, but, or for PFSense, but you know what? If you're gonna build it, you might as well overbuild it a little bit. So on the front of the box, we have the USB ports with one USB 3 port. We have D sub output, which hopefully I am poking because I can't see. And I have the power button and the power ID. And then on the back, we have the reason I picked this particular model, the four Intel Gigabit NICs. And these are what are going to make, or what's going to make this router amazing. So we're gonna to have to look at the configuration of how to set up all these ports, because you have to do it all manually, but it's very cool having multiple ports. So the idea is to have one is your WAN port, which is the external network, which goes to the internet. And these three over here will be our LAN ports. So these will be basically bridged together to act as one port, and then the LAN setup in this will act as that. Because a router, by definition, uh, tends to only have one WAN port and one LAN port. And then the LAN port goes to a switch, which does the switching. Now, unfortunately, we, um, we can only have one output. That means two ports are going unused. And if you have Wi-Fi, you get three ports going unused. So the idea then is to combine all the things you're not using and act, make them act as one port on a switch, which is done with, in PFSense anyway, it's done with a bridge, I believe. And uh, maybe there's a better way of doing it. I'm a newbie, so have to get it done somehow, which is exactly what this TP-Link is. So if we turn the TP-Link around, we can see we've got our WAN port and our four LAN ports. So this is basically a router to this switch, this is a switch. And then with a Wi-Fi access point as well, with a, a Wi-Fi card, which is acting as another item on the switch. So what I've done is I've basically made this my router. This act as a switch and a Wi-Fi access point together. Let's jump into configuration on PFSense and get all this hooked up. So once all our installing is done, sorted, all set up, everything's good. Uh, we've set up our WAN and LAN ports according to the prompt. So we've picked our LAN port, whether it's Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 are the ones I picked. We've got to log in over a network. So we need to plug in a cable into our LAN port, plug one into a computer, and do some configuration. So this is the uh, configuration by default. It's at 192.168.1.1. 
Now, I'm not actually going to go to this address. I'm going to change and go to my local, which is uh, pfsense.land. So I've set up a DNS entry or the name to be pfsense.land so I can log in with my password manager. So we're going to log in. And we're going to see my amazing pfsense uh, dashboard, which is the standard one. So I'm going to give us a quick overview of what actually is going on here. So we can see our quad core CPU. We can see our CPU usage of 15%. Our temperature is about 26 degrees, which is normal enough. Uh, three of our three percent of our 30 gig thing very little ram nine percent of our eight gigs of ram so not much being used and uh, we can see our versions so let's oh there's an update available i need to update at some point so let's take a look at interfaces because this is the interesting part so if we go up here to the top these are obviously all the different menus so we've got inter uh, system which are things like advanced general setup which is what this is a general setup page uh, this is our host name, this is our domains, this is all the local addresses go. We've got our DNS servers. You will be asked for these at the initial setup. You'll have to go through a little setup wizard. So our one is 8888-8844. They're the Google ones, and these are the open DNS ones. So if Google DNS goes down for some magical reason, open DNS will stay up. Uh, localization, time servers. We're using uh, UTC because that's our time zone and a bunch of other stuff let's go to our interfaces so the interfaces are basically the connection that you set up so these are how you organize the ports so you can see here one is igb0 which is the number one port on the back of the device i have it labeled with a little sticky label and this one port is this is what's connected to the actual uh, internet so my isp's modem is actually in bridge mode so this is actually connecting directly to the ISP's modem. Then we've got our LAN, and you'll see our LAN is a bridge zero. So you'll see we've got multiple LAN ports, okay? This is because you can actually create more ports. Now, we can't actually assign anymore because we don't have any free ports. So you'll notice here we've got three Ethernet ports left because we have four ports, one for one, and three LANs. So that's one, two, and three. However, if we go over to our bridges, You'll see here, look, we have a bridge. So a bridge is essentially a virtual port, which is the sum of the other three ports. Now this is not um, banding or any of the fancy stuff where you, uh, I can't remember what it's called, multiplexing? I'm not sure. It's where you put to combine two network connections. It's not that. What actually is, is a, a switch. Essentially it's a virtual switch. So if we wanted to set up another bridge, we'd pick our ports and it will connect all those together. So that's the way I have this set up. Maybe there's a better way of doing it. You can set up things like VLAN, so virtual networks. Uh, so you can have each port be a, a different network. So PFSense will essentially configure it as three separate networks. So you can have like a public network, a private network, and you can set up the firewall rules to be, to say, okay, the private network can never talk to the internet and it will never receive traffic from the internet, which means it's more secure. So then we need to go into our firewall rules. And if we go to the LAN rule, uh, we've got a I'm trying to remember where which one is which okay. rules. Anyway, I have a firewall rule set up somewhere along here. I can't remember where it is. Oh yeah, so this is a default. So basically, I've set up a rule that allows all traffic from LAN to LAN one, LAN two, and LAN three to communicate with each other to allow traffic to flow. Because otherwise, I wasn't able to communicate from uh, my home server to my desktop, which makes no sense. So I've got that, and then you've got a million other things you can configure in here. You've got all your DHCP stuff, so you can set up uh, the DHCP server, the forwarder, the resolver, the dynamic DNS. That's for, so when you use a DYDNS service, um, I do actually have a dynamic domain name, and it will ping the uh, that every time your IP changes. My got good routers will have this, HA proxy, this is for reverse proxying, uh, it's something I'm working on, it's internal stuff, squid proxy. Uh, this is for HTTP caching, I haven't set that up yet. We've also got our VPN. So we can actually go to OpenVPN. And this is where you would connect to, you would set up your PFSense to connect to 
uh, what uh, to something like private internet access. So when you set it up, it connects and off she goes. Uh, you've got statuses, so you can see the different uh, interfaces, traffic graph, what to make calls and most traffic. You've got routes, you can have to reboot as usual. You can do trace routes testing from here, so you can do pings from here. So I can ping google.com, IPv4, maximum number of pings. We'll try IPv6. So my ISP doesn't have IPv6. But when we do a ping, you'll see here we got our, our ping. We'll just log out, but it's very, very cool. And that's PFSense in a nutshell.